Hey, fourth grade. Hope all is well on your end. Um, we are getting ready to get back into DCPS packet week number three. Um, and we're going to be looking at days four and five. So we're going to be looking at the different projects um, that we have to choose from. And then we're going to be planning and then drafting and publishing. Okay. So go ahead and grab your packets and uh, make sure you are looking at days four and five. Here we go. All right, so for days four and five, they want us to um, basically choose a project that we're gonna plan and publish. They give us three options. The first one um, they give us is to write a letter to a book pub, excuse me, book publishing company, um, persuading them why they should publish more books about women in the revolution. The second option says write a write or film a speech explaining why and how women should be remembered for their contribution to the fight for independence. The third option here says write an essay explaining why and how women should be remembered for their contributions to the fight for independence. So if you guys notice, um, options two and three are pre pretty much um, the same thing. One you're writing, the other one you're you're filming and you're you're speaking it. Okay, so for the purpose of today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to go over option one and then I'm actually going to go over the essay as option number two, because when we get to the third option, you're simply going to take whatever you published from your essay. And if you are choosing the speech option, then you'll take your essay and you'll basically um, read it while you're filming yourself. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start with option one, the letter. We need to figure out um, what they're asking us to write about, the topic, we're gonna to figure out our audience and the purpose. So for the letter, the topic is, um, we're writing a letter to persuade a book publishing company to publish more books about women in the revolution. Our audience, of course, is the book publishing company. Very simple. And then our purpose for this is to, yes, to persuade. We are persuading this book publishing company to publish more books about women during the American Revolution. All right. So let's go ahead and plan this out. I'm going to use a single paragraph outline. Um, also, since this is a letter, we want to make sure that we use our greeting, Dear Book Publishing Company. I want to keep it very simple, very generic. Now, if you know a specific name of a book publishing company, by all means, feel free to put that in, okay? So we want to start with our topic sentence. What, what is it that we want to say to them? What's the, the big main idea that we want to get across to them in our topic sentence? And this is what I came up with. Women made many amazing contributions to our country during the American Revolution, and I believe you should publish more books to highlight their accomplishments. That's pretty much the main thing that we want to, um, to convey to these, to these companies that we're writing to, okay? Now, when we get to our details, we've got to pull evidence from those two texts that, um, that would make them believe that they should do that. What is the evidence that we're using to make these companies um, want to publish more books? So this is the evidence that I selected that I felt like would make them maybe consider publishing more books. The first thing that I uh, came up with was I wanted to talk about how women boycotted British goods and how that led to the Stamp Act being repealed. Right? I think that's something that should be highlighted. The second thing that I feel like would maybe convince them would be to talk about how women created the Liberty Tea and how that led to British, um, the British government couldn't pay their soldiers because colonists started purchasing the Liberty Tea instead of the tea that came from Great Britain, right? The third piece of evidence that I feel like would be um, great enough to convince them to publish more books was I wanted to highlight Margaret Corbin. Um, 
I feel like she is uh, worth talking about because she is one of the women who actually replaced their husbands in war. And the last piece of evidence I wanted to use for this letter is the fact that Rebecca Mott burned her home and that led to the Patriots regaining control. So I feel like all of these are things that um, book publishing companies could publish books about because these are notable um, contributions that women made during this time. And then of course, for your concluding sentence, you wanna make sure that you're wrapping it up. You wanna make sure that you're driving that main point home to them. You wanna make sure that at the end of your letter, you're saying, hey, just to remind you, this is why I feel like you should publish more books about these women. So in my conclusions, concluding sentence, I said, in summary, these are just a few contributions that I feel should be highlighted in more of your books to honor these trailblazing women of the American Revolution. All right, so here's our plan. Now let's do our first draft. Let's turn this into a complete letter. Oh, also at the end of your letter, you also want to um, sign off with your name. So sincerely, and then your name. All right, so in my first draft, you'll see on the left, okay, I'm not gonna read the entire thing, but I will read the second draft. So for the first draft, I simply took my outline and converted that into a complete paragraph. Um, and in this case, a letter. But there were a couple of things that I wanted to change in my second draft. Um, so if you look over to the right hand side, the things that are highlighted, um, I added when colonists bought Liberty Tea instead of British Tea, the British government was unable to pay their soldiers. So I really wanted to highlight um, the reason why that was important. In my first paragraph, I simply said that the ladies created Liberty Tea. But in my second draft, I wanted to make sure that I highlighted why that was so important. So I added that into my second draft. I also wanted to show the similarities between Margaret and Rebecca. So what I did in my second draft, I um, put in similarly to Margaret, Rebecca Mott also showed bold support for freedom. She burned her home during the war, which helped the Patriots regain control. So in the first paragraph, I did talk about Margaret and I did talk about Rebecca, but I did not show how their relationship was important, how they, how the things that they did were connected in importance, okay? So I wanted to make sure that I added that and make sure that I expanded on those ideas, okay? So you guys can um, read the difference between the first draft and the second draft. I'm not going to go ahead and read every single sentence, but I want you to be able to see um, the difference in between the two. So this would be a good place to pause the video so that you can go through, read both letters, and figure out um, the areas in which I expanded my ideas, okay? All right, we're gonna move on to option, one second, option number two which I said was going to be the essay. Now on your paper, it says the second option is the speech. But remember, we're gonna talk about the essay first because the essay and the speech are the exact same. The only difference is that for the essay, you're gonna write it out. And for the speech, you're gonna take that same essay that you wrote and you're going to film yourself saying it as in a speech, okay? All right, so let's look at the essay. The essay says, write an essay explaining why and how women should be remembered for their contributions to the fight for independence. What are they asking us to write about? Simply, they're asking us um, to write about the why and the how women should be remembered. So we need to talk about why it's important that they're remembered and then how do we think that they should do that? Okay, so you want to come up with an idea of how they should be remembered. Secondly, our audience is non experts. Anyone can read this, anyone can look at our speech, 
um, and still know that it's important for women um, to be highlighted during this time. You don't have to know a lot about the American Revolution. You don't have to know anything about it, honestly. Um, that's our job as the writer. Our job is to convey these ideas in a way to convince people that it is important, okay? And what's our purpose? Our purpose for this specific project is to inform and explain. We're informing people of the contributions that women made and we're explaining why and how they should be um, remembered, okay? All right, so let's plan it out. For our topic sentence, I said that women made many amazing contributions to our country during the American Revolution. And I believe they should be recognized and honored for their fight for freedom. For my details, um, these are the things that I pointed out. Um, I'm not sure why it's starting with detail number three, but detail number three says women um, became soldiers and spies. I feel like that is a reason why they should be honored because many of them became women, um, sorry, many of them became soldiers and spies in the war. Let me go ahead and um, put all my details out and then I'll go through them, okay? Um, detail number one, I said that they boycotted British goods which led to the Stamp Act repealed. As far as the how, which is my second detail, I said that um, a new stamp collection that featured women of the American Revolution would be a cool way to highlight some of their accomplishments and honor them for that. So maybe just creating a, a stamp collection that just focuses on the women of the American Revolution. I think that would be pretty cool. And then we just talked about how there were women soldiers and spies. And to honor those women, I think that it would be pretty cool if there were new monuments and memorials that were created to highlight the things that they did. So women like uh, Margaret Corbin that we talked about, Rebecca, uh, excuse me, Rebecca Mott and Deborah Sampson, those um, women who were actually on the battlefield, um, I feel like that there should be a monument or a memorial to honor those women. And for our concluding sentence, I said, in summary, these are just a few contributions that I feel should be recognized and highlighted to honor these trailblazing women of the American Revolution, okay? So as far as my first and second draft, one thing that I wanted to change from my first draft to my second draft, um, if you see the parts that are highlighted, the first sentence that I highlighted says, many women like Margaret Corbin fought in the war alongside or in place of their husband. Some women even became spies. So I talked more specifically about um, women that needed to be highlighted. In my first draft, I didn't name any specific women. In my second draft, I wanted to make sure that I went back and added that. It's important to highlight specific women that we know about. The second sentence that I highlighted says, Margaret, along with all of the many other women who fought on the battlefield, should be recognized with monuments and memorials. So I wanted to um, highlight Margaret, of course, as being one of the leaders, but also I wanted to make sure that my reader knows that she wasn't the only woman that was on the battlefield that was um, kind of in the line of fire fighting for freedom. So I wanted to make sure that I went back and expanded that idea as well, okay? This would be a good place in the video for you to pause and go back and read the differences between the first draft and the second draft, okay? All right. And then last but not least is the speech. Like I said, the speech is the exact same as the essay. So I'm not gonna go through it line by line, but as you can see, the tap is the same. You're also gonna be able to see that the outline is the same. And then of course, the drafts are the exact same as well. The only difference for 
your third option of the speech is that you are simply going to take that essay, stand in front of a camera, and read your essay. Okay. The only thing I might add is you may want to introduce yourself at the beginning of your speech. Um, make sure that you are keeping direct eye contact with your audience and make sure that you speak with a very clear, concise voice so that they can understand what you're saying. Okay. Um, so that is all for today. Um, good luck with your projects, guys. Um, feel free to take a picture of your project. Um, if you film yourself during the speech, feel free to send that to me as well. I would love to see you guys um, practicing your speeches. That's the option that you choose, all right? All right, see you guys later.